Hello everybody, this is Terry Nance. I want to welcome you to 8 Minutes Strong with the Armor Bearer. I trust you're having a blessed day. I want you to say this as you're listening to this broadcast. Say something good is going to happen to me today. This is a day the Lord made and he has something great for you. If you enjoy the videos, this is what we're doing, please subscribe to it, but then take the link and send it to as many people as you can because I believe the body of Christ needs to hear this message. And I know also your pastor needs the support and he needs the help right now. And I don't think there's anything better out there right now than what I'm, what I'm giving and what I'm sowing. You say, how can you say that? Well, you know, I, I've done this. Uh, God gave me this revelation, the armor bearer. I didn't have a clue that I would write the first book ever written on the subject. And the Lord used me and he gave me that revelation. And now it's just time for me to impart it. I believe that the, the spirit of impartation, you teach what you know, but you impart who you are. And I am, I am just praying for God to just use me in this season in my life to just put it into as many people as possible. And that leads me into, I am now a life coach but I'm really focusing on uh, the armor bearer and ministry. And so if you're a pastor, you're a leader, you're an armor bearer, and you're interested in that, go to the website, uh, godsarmorbearer.com, and you can get the information and plus get the books. But uh, I've been talking about the different tests for a few weeks, the tests that we go through. And uh, the test of stability, blooming where you're planted was what I've been talking about this week. But I want to go into really which the test of faithfulness. Uh, Revelation 19, 11, there's such a beautiful scripture. This is what it says. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and he makes war. Now, Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But the Bible says when we see him coming, we will call him faithful and we will call him true. Now, here's a question we all have to ask ourselves. When our pastor sees us coming, what does he call you? <laughs> what does he say? Does the pastor look back when he sees you come in and says, oh man, Ooh, faithfulness and true, uh, trustworthy is coming in the room or does your pastor, uh, take off and run for cover? Now that's real simple. You can find out just what he thinks about you by you even coming into his presence. But what we want is to be able for them to say, man, that individual's faithful. And faithfulness, it always starts in the beginning. And please understand me. You don't need a title to be faithful. Uh, there's a crown of righteousness in faithfulness, believe me, that Jesus will put on your head. But it's very, very important to realize that faithful begins in the small things. It always does. What is at your hand to do? How can you prove yourself faithful? First Samuel chapter 16, 13, it says, And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And then Samuel arose and went to Ramoth. Now that that's a very and that's a very powerful statement that the Spirit of God speaks to Samuel and says, Hey, go to go to the house of Jesse. I have a, a young man there I want you to anoint uh to be king. And you know, there's there's some things you can read and and honestly when you look at that and you look at the story, now here here's where you have to deal with rejection and hurt here. Uh because David, when Samuel when Samuel came in the house, and then that'd be like the greatest prophet of the day or the greatest pastor and leader coming into your home and saying, Bring all the kids, I want to bless them. And and uh Samuel walks in there and tries to anoint the first one. And God says to him, what you see on the outside, I don't look at, it. I see what's in the heart. Now that tells every one of us something that God looks right through our skull and he looks at the heart. He's not looking at title and he's not looking at office. He looks at heart. And so he goes down the list of the kids and finally he looks at Jesse and says, well, you got any other children? He goes, well, there's David, you know, a little one, a little runt of the litter, basically. My little ADHD child, he's out in the field somewhere. 
And they said, well, go get him. And so they bring him in and God says, that's my man. You know, sometimes that's just the way the spirit of God is. The, the people we think are the least, I mean, God bestows abundant honor on. I'm, that's just the way he does. And so David kneels and that oil is poured over him. And man, I'm just telling you, whoo, he's ready to be king. I mean, God's anointed to be king. Interesting, when I was reading that story, I had the, just this question rise up in me. What did David do after he was anointed to be king? And I'll tell you what he did. Went right back out in that shepherd's field. And he had to care for the flock, he had to care for the sheep. You know, and I've often thought, well, if it was a huge flock of sheep, there's a little recognition to it. But when he went, when he was fighting Goliath, his brother said, what have you done with the few sheep? So let's just stop and think, man, there probably wasn't more than 20 stinking sheep or, or less. And here he is, he's, he's taking care of those sheep. And then all of a sudden here comes a lion. Well, I mean, he's been anointed to be king. He's been anointed by the spirit of God. And this is where he sees the anointing increase and where he becomes fearless in God was right there. The spirit of God comes on him. He takes the line, kills the line. Then he does it to a bear and he begins to grow in his strength. And where did he do that? In the small things. You will never graduate to the big things until you can be faithful in the small things. You've got to, you've got to understand the call of God on your life and you need to be faithful to your leader. When you come into the church, uh, church starts at 10 o'clock and it, especially if you're an armor bearer, you'd be there an hour, hour and a half early. You'd be praying. You making sure everything's set so that the pastor doesn't have to worry about things when he walks in the church. You make sure that things are, are, are right. And that's the way we do in every aspect of ministry and the ministry helps whatever, wherever you at, you do it with excellence. I used to arrive at the church a good hour and a half early. First 30 minutes to an hour, honestly, I spent praying for the service, whether I was preaching or not. And very seldom did I preach. It was uh, the pastor who ministered. Sometimes I did, but I always prayed to get the mind of God and pray for my leader, intercede for him, and then would would go out and make sure the nursery's ready, make sure every aspect of the ministry is ready and prepared. And when you do that, you are lifting up your leader and you're being faithful in the small things. So I encourage you today, you be faithful to your, your leader and know that the anointing of God is going to increase you because you'll never ever face your Goliath until you can face your lion and your bear in the small things. Father, I bless everyone watching this broadcast. I pray your blessing upon them and increase in the name of Jesus. This is the day the Lord made, and we're going to rejoice in it. Something good is going to happen for you today.